the question that most people ask is why would you even want to use wood as a material for a bike frame? And when we started out, we just used it because it was easy to work with. We didn't want to weld one from steel. But over time, I really fell in love with the idea of using wood as a bike frame. There are some other people who've done it. It doesn't seem to be a lot of people in this world, but some tried it and some very successfully, I would say. And the main points that come up in this argument of whether or not you want to use wood as a bicycle frame is I would say a metal bike frame is way stronger than it needs to be. A steel or aluminium bike frame can last for centuries if you actually treat it decently. And wood, I would say, is definitely enough because most people don't use their bike for centuries. Then you have the second point, which is that it actually softens the ride. It's way softer to ride than a aluminium or steel bike. Because if you look at it pragmatically, we are building bikes mostly from steel or aluminium or even carbon fiber, and we make these frames as stiff as we possibly can. We make hollow tubes, uh, weld them together, and they're insanely stiff, and then we put suspensions on the bike which is a bit of a weird approach if you look at it practically. The nice thing about the wood is you can actually design it in a way where the wood acts as a bit of a suspension. It depends a lot on the design, of course. You can also build a completely stiff wooden bike. And to be honest, if you'd ask me what the coolest thing about riding this bicycle in my daily life is, I would say that it's people coming up to you, talking to you about it, it's a conversation starter and it really stands out. It's just not common to see a wooden bike on the street, right? Many people are super fascinated about it if they see it in the street and I love that. So weight-wise, the frame behind me weighs a bit above 3 kilos. So that is on pair with a steel bike frame. With an aluminium bike frame, you can get down to like two kilograms roughly, and a carbon bike frame, you can build one that has like one kilogram. Those are roughly the weights. Earlier in this project, I always wanted to get the weight down, but realistically, I would say it's not very dramatic. This video, I somehow also wanted to talk about our design process because I think it's really interesting. Like all the things we've learned and the process we went through to get to the version I have behind me. In the next bit, I'm going to try to just highlight the most interesting and most major design choices. I can't cover everything at all. We've been working on these bikes for half a year now, and by we, I mean a really good engineering buddy of mine and then another friend of his who's also studying engineering. It started when we all came together and we really wanted to once in our lifetime build a bicycle frame. This was just a dream of ours and we said, okay, fuck it, we're just gonna do it. And at the beginning we tried to build a really simple bike frame, we wanted to film it and then show people how we built it so that they can maybe recreate it or something. The point where we started was we didn't have many design goals or anything, we were just trying around whatever worked. And we thought, okay, the best approach for us at the beginning is layering plywood next to each other like this. So you have the plywood layers uh, because we can cut them out with a jigsaw or something like that super easily. So it's very easy for us to make the frame or in the future you could even see and see it out of sheets. Um, seemed promising. So we started to build this and when we built this we also CNC'd rounding in here into the wood so that we can glue the seat post into the wood here. And then, yeah, we just drilled a hole here. The hole here was super tricky because it's not very easy to drill a hole this tall. We didn't expect it at the beginning, but it became a really big issue. Um, somehow we managed to do it though. And then we ended up with our first prototype. And it drove, but it was wobbly as heck. <laughs> so the problem is if you build a plywood bike like this, with these thin strips as the beams, it becomes very wobbly. 
Plywood is insanely stiff in one direction, but in the other direction, you have a great amount of flex. And this was our weak point. But it proved to us that the base concept worked. Uh, the back beams were quite nice. And we tried getting around this wobbly issue, but realistically we would have so much material it would become insanely bulky to the point where we rethought our base design. And then we ended up at a different approach. We thought, okay, if this is not the right way, wouldn't it be ideal to actually turn the plywood around and use it like this? So now the plywood is stiff in the right direction and its flexibility in this direction actually gives it a little bit of a suspension effect. So this seemed far more promising in the long run. It was a bit trickier to build, but actually we managed to find a nice way. On this version, we made two pieces that we then glued together so that we overcame the issue of drilling this big hole. We put aluminium tubes in here for the weight. We bought a steel crankshaft housing socket that we put in here. And one big change was that we left away the wood here because we realized on the first version, all this wood is quite useless because strength-wise, this tube is enough. We can't ditch this tube because we need it for the seat post. So we thought, why not just leave it away? This is how we ended up here. Uh, we took the back beams from the old version because it was still quite nice. We made the backdrops from aluminium and we epoxied the back beams to the main frame as well as put in some screws. And then I cycled with this bike frame for a few months and this was a big proof of concept to me because the bike was alright and I was actually fine with it and I enjoyed the experience. It wasn't a very nice bike because I just put one gear on it and it was just a roughly patched together bike by someone who's not even experienced with bike parts, so it was a bit of a mess. But it was the big proof of concept and it gave me a lot of confidence to continue. But one person on our team wanted to get a new bike, so we actually used this opportunity and built the new version for him. Uh, we tried to fix all the minor problems we had with this version and we tried out some extra things like making the backdrops from wood which was really dumb uh, in the long run we shouldn't have done that. The aluminium really doesn't look nice and we didn't want to paint it. We reconsidered our metal parts and actually changed over to stainless steel. The advantages of the stainless steel is that it looks way nicer, you can polish it and unlike steel it doesn't rust so it's quite nice to use for the bike. You can get thinner pipes and they're just as strong of course but they're heavier therefore. With this version we messed up the angle of the fork which was really weird and we were so annoyed about it because it was such a simple mistake. This bike again had so many problems and at this point this project became really emotional. We had so many ups and downs and you really start to question the whole project so many times. Personally, I always then thought to myself, maybe it doesn't feel like we've come far, but we tried out so many things, we have learned so much and it still seems somewhat promising, so there's no way I'm gonna give up. I then sat down and I tried to find solutions for all of the problems we had with the bike and this is the version that came out of it and it seems really promising. Again, I fucked up the angle of the fork, this time it's too steep so it's more like a mountain bike frame, could be worse I guess. For the first time this feels like a really nice normal bike apart from the stiffness. So the only thing that differs this from my aluminium bike frame that I normally use is the wobble. It's not as stiff as a normal bike in this direction. And I'm quite convinced that the majority of this softness comes from the headpiece. And with this bike version I am incredibly happy with the backdrops, with all the connections, uh, with the usage of metal parts. The only thing I really want to redesign is the headpiece. I've tested out many things and I have a solution that I'm very, very confident in that I'm gonna try out when I build the next version. But for now, this is quite patched together at the front uh, because I tried out so many things. <laughs> it looks a bit messed up, but I feel ready for the next version now. Mounting rim brakes was a bit tricky on all the old versions. So now I finally switched to disc brakes. 
I'm super happy. Mounting them was way easier than I thought. And as someone who normally rides rim brakes, I have to admit I really fell in love with them. We used to not fix the seat post tube in place, so it wasn't really connected with the wood because gluing it to the wood never really worked for us. It always loosened. Even though we sanded, we tried to remove the oxidizing layer. I don't know why it still didn't work. I really don't understand to this day why it didn't. But anyways, with the latest version, we fixed them together. And at the bottom, there's also a bolt running through the metal. So everything's fixed and really nicely mounted. I rode this bike for like three months now. And as I said, I'm incredibly happy. I really want to redesign the head unit. And there are some small things like the kickstand that I would love to let my creativity loose on. But those are just minor things. It started out as a fun project and now I honestly feel so amazed by this design. I almost feel comfortable enough to sell it. From the beginning, we designed this thing to be built fairly easily. We always had the production in mind. And this is the coolest thing about this design, I would say, because there are amazing carpenters out there who build really unique uh, bike frames from solid wood. And I think they're masterpieces, but they cost thousands of euros. They are unique work of arts by amazing carpenters. And with this design, it's not a huge amount of effort to build the frame, yet it still feels quite unique and awesome. So this was our design philosophy. I'm super excited that I'm finally uploading the video, updating you guys about this project, because it's been so cool learning all these things and I really wanted to share them with you and hope that some of you really get excited about this. And I'm sure some people out there can actually make use of this information and I hope you create awesome stuff with it. This is one of the bigger projects in my life and I'm super excited to work on it. If you have any questions regarding this project, then feel free to ask in the comments. I'm gonna answer you as soon as I can. And with this being said, I hope you have an amazing day.